Why are they like that? Who knows? Point is, last time you arrived in Rackengol after a, a, a bumpy little train ride on a dinky little train. You met up with the local uh, hotshot newcomer. Thinks he's, thinks he's gonna be gonna be the big ticket item around here, or something. We can fix that. I mean, this is a signed post, and he really just kind of wants to make the most of it. You know, it's one of those people where you give him a job, and he's like, I'll do this job no matter how much I hate it. Aww, good for him. Additionally, he needs, he needs to find his spin, you know? Like, you show up in a place, and you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go, or who to talk to. It takes a little bit of time to, to, to find the fun in things. You're currently at the Vorstadt in the state. You had a little nap, because that's a nice way to bookend things. Hello. Oh, Argus, you're finally <laughs> here. Como, I mean. Was the nap the magic word? Nap, nap. We are the naps celebrating another birthday nap. I wish. Is there a birthday somewhere? No, that's just how the song goes. Well, okay. Rats, rats, we are the rats celebrating another birthday bash. Take an ice cream on its way. And Michael, you're such a good boy this year. Man, it's just a good song. You can jam and jive to it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Point is, you wake up in the nice prairie air. For a moment, it feels as if you are still in space, in the high tech levels that surround the Imperium. The truth is, the minute you open a window or step outside of the climate-controlled building, where the many cleaning robots are hovering around, you immediately become confronted by the fact that you are in a dry... It's not... It, it's, it, it's warm, like plants would probably thrive here, but, you know... <laughs> There's a distinct difference between the comfortable climate-controlled interior and the dry exterior, as well as the environment, which is yellowish, and now that you get a real good look at it, a little depressing. The fact that nothing really grows all that well, despite trying. It's doing its best. Does anyone have any particular morning rituals that are in effect before you are tended to the, 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 the breakfast table? Brush my teeth. I have a shower. A little bit of like morning yoga somewhere, t like somewhere high, somewhere tall. I assume I usually get up pretty early and like get get a lay of the horizon and stuff. This delightful estate, by the way, is completely serviced. As in, there's a little robot that does the cooking. Aww. So when you arrive, there's like a little little stack of pancakes. Um, your boss happens to be sitting at the table, as are the other three individuals in so uh, Yeah, three. There's the administrator lady, there's the driver, security guard, and then there's Mr. Techman. He has a degree, probably. Point is, um, y you have this big fancy table that easily sits all of you. It probably sits up to 20 people. Um, Imperium standard is that you can receive at least 20 individuals of renown at any given time. Damn. They're all sitting at like one end, which makes it look very, very sad, because it's four people sitting at a table for 20. Are we, like, close to each other? or If you want to... We have to Wait, so, so, so like, Jesus, like Jesus and the two, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, the minute you arrive, you're perfectly allowed to help fluff out the table a little bit with your presence, and make it, like, at least half full. It's just that the first person who arrives sees this really empty ta room environment. How many people are supposed to be stuffing these again? Um, let me look that up for you, but I think it's like at like 10 to 20 or something. It, it, there needs to be way more people for this location to be as intended in terms of staffing. Let's see if I can find a particular number for you. If it gets a little bit too lonely, we can do cardboard cutouts. Yep. Here we go. Um, 10 to 20 people is about what's expected. Most noble uh, nobility in the Imperium tend to have all kinds of specialized staff and then a little selection of like five servants specifically. But Willard is a military man and probably wasn't interested in any of that. Also, he probably doesn't have the best support considering the last guy flubbed it. Well, fair. So, yeah. Did 
Jesus. Don't know what they're doing next to here, but it sure sounds like a hoop. A hoop. Yeah, man. Well, well I must sit at the table then. Willard puts his hands on the table and stands up and would like to proudly uh, request if there are any plans for the first day, since he really would like to just g g get his fingers into the business, as it were. I'm not here, after all, to, to, to make a mess of things. I want to improve things as quickly as possible. Get something going around here, and maybe find some people willing to make this place look a little lively. Hmm. Should we, like, survey the locals on what the well, immediate my, my needs idea are? Was, yeah? My idea was to hold, uh, hold, uh, it's not, not, it's not a presence, it's not a performance, it's a fucking education thing about med about basic medicine. Mm. To the locals. Cool, cool, cool. What not to what not to do with a wound? Number one, don't stop dirt, dirt in it. Shit like that. <laughs> the basics. Gosh, that sounds like quite I an mean, idea. This might be a low tech lot. This hmm? might be a low tech planet, but they're probably not savages. Probably. We could at the very least check out a nearby town to see if they have any kind of medical facility in that case. Hmm. Kind of just familiarize ourselves with the area and see True. with our own eyes I... what needs to be fiddled with. Well, this building actually, if you want medical facilities for yourself, this place does have an auto dock. Like, it straight up has a surgical robot. No, we meant in the city. Yeah, like for them. Um, If you ask around, David does say that Ali saw it was at most like a barber in the classic sense. Gotcha. Ooh. Um. Uh... One more question that I wanted to ask. Is there any sort of like P.O. box where they might have been directing their requests or something of the sort? What do you mean? It's a pretty big city. Well, they might have been requesting something from the local quote-unquote government. Um, David can tell you that they, yeah, the post office holds onto it, but it's not like, not like nowadays where you have like official post boxes. It's just like they hold onto the mail for you for a while. Mm -hmm. Got it. We might want to check that. You don't trust Dravit to, to pick up the mail? No, we do. What I'm saying is just take a look at that, what the people want. Yeah. Like, mingle with them also. Like, leave a good impression for the boss. Okay, cool. So, the plans are to hold a course on medical treatment and to go visit the post office to talk to people. Yeah. Not talk to people. Just check if they have any requests. I don't want to force myself into their lives. I just want to check if they had any requests to fix something or whatever. Mm. And then also just to see, like, what the vibe is. Mm-hmm. Like, how close to mutiny? How close to... <laughs> how long until we can get Mad Max happening? All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Good. Gotcha. Well, David is there's more than willing to drive you over if you want to, or you can take one of the vehicles for yourself. Hmm. You do have clearance at this point to access the vehicles and drive them without needing like a key or anything. Biometric scanners and funny stuff. That's kind of cool. Yep. Hmm. It'll probably be smart just to take a vehicle for ourselves, just in case something comes up. Don't want to yeah. inconvenience others. Plus, he probably has his own stuff to do. Yeah. You can drive here. Does anyone in this party have the skill to drive? Uh, I think I have one. Well, I think... Okay. Well, most things, give it a crack. Um, yeah. At least, yeah. Most people, the, a couple of people in this party have drive zero, and Max has drive one, so yes. You have people who are, at the very least, qualified to, m to, to, to man an automotive vehicle. We may not all know how to drive stick shift, but we know what a car is. We can vroom vroom. <laughs> Handsome. So you're just gonna head straight to town? Okay, I'm back. Hi! Hello. Keep going and not telling anyone that you're leaving. Well, it's I'm a little sorry. hard in the context. But yeah, so do we, do we need any supplies? Like for a medical show, maybe grab a toolkit? 
I mean, there are plenty of supplies in this place in terms of toolkits of a variety of tech level needs and medical kits. Yeah, I'm gonna take a couple of medical medical kits. Hmm. Just to show it, and maybe hand it if there's like an emergency emergency. No, I'm taking them for myself. We need. Oh, them. excellent. <laughs> yeah, we probably will. Knowing us, we, we probably will need a bit of help. I mean, if you're gonna be showing them the mad kits, make sure you can produce more than now. Hmm. Just do the first aid. I mean that as well, but yeah. <laughs> cool. You grab what you need and head on out. Broom, broom. Yeehaw. Luckily, you're a little... Uh, so... Man, I love it how, the timing. Um, these cars have what's... It's a pretty fancy kind of thing. They have what's called micro-GPS. Since there's no GPS network in the actual satellite system, these things have micro-GPS, which is it records the local area and makes a sort of blueprint out of it so that it has something resembling a map. Uh, most of these vehicles have been driven by Draven at some point in the ra in the last few weeks and months, so they have a basic map as to where Rack and Goal is, Gore is, and uh, where Ancras is. So you can find your way around to those obvious destinations with ease. Heck yeah! Making your way over to town, you drive past the dry fields. It's the the sky is bright and blue with a few thin streaks of clouds that are. It's kind of like when when you're very, very thirsty and someone is like waving a water bottle in front of your face. You can't imagine that people like the sight of like these thin strip clouds in the middle of the sky when it's so dry. Um, and every time you... The, the, the road from Vorstatten Estate, for the most part, again, made out of fusion sealed stone, but eventually you go onto the dirt roads where even the dirt sounds extremely dry. A little extra crunch. Though to be fair, most... People probably don't have the kind of vehicles that are necessary to really break the stone up. They have carts. They don't have cars. Off in the distance, on some of the farms, you see individuals riding on birds. Or horses, assorted animals. But still, the constant, always present air that things are a little bit sickly, starving, dehydrated. Once you reach town, you arrive from the stockyard. You can see that the train is still perfectly parked in place. It hasn't changed a bit. There's the, the expected busyness of the morning day. Individuals walking around, the loud banging of individuals trying to fix things. Once you slide into the commercial district, however, heading over to the admin center where you will probably find the post office. Am I hearing myself over someone else's feed here? Whatever. Once you s me. slide through the commercial district, you eventually notice a little uh, side of a ruckus on the way. There seems to be two individuals standing at the side of the road near one of the big bars. And they seem to be, like, shoving each other and yelling. Luckily, these vehicles are, are soundproofed. So, unless you open up a window, you won't even hear them. Does it look like it's getting actually violent? Um, Should it, like, open a window? <laughs> well, their gestures are quite violent. And they're both, like, you know, peacocking. They're like, like, ah, wah. Can That's we crack fine. open a window? Can we, can we crack open the window to, like, see what's up? Crack and open a window, you can hear the conversation. It sounds like mm -hmm. uh, one, of, one of those big, tough ladies who could probably lift a whole hail bill with her, with her bare hands. And you got a guy who sounds like he knows his way around a, 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 a long plane and a good horse. So the, the, the two of them are having a vivid colored argument about the woman's apparent water supply mm. and the mm. fact that she's supposed to sh that she should share it like he's like oh, i should share that with everyone it's a common good yeah and then she keeps rebuffing well you know this is pretty dang easy to build your own little water supply water uh, stock and just build it up when the the next flood comes instead of yelling at people yeah 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 you essentially it's a bit of a heated argument, and it's unclear if this is going to stay peaceful. So do we know what the next flood is? As in, like... Dun yeah. How would you predict that? There's no, like, set interval if you, that's the question you're asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So it's not, like, a seasonal one. So it's, it's more like... Um, I assume that someone would have filled you in on this little obvious detail, but... There is rain from time to time, but it are torrential floods that don't really sink into the, the soil very well. So the aquifers don't replenish, mm -hmm. and things just get washed away. 
So, and it's, Lots it's of water. yeah, yeah. So the the water you need to build massive tubs if you want to gather anything of it, or it'll just go and leave. And it seems like she did that. Well, seems like something we can work on. Some tub building. Well, your uh, post center is down the road, so if you want nothing to do with these individuals, you can go for it. Mm. Although... Who's driving? Mm, it's up to you. Mm. Uh, probably Max, they're the one that knows how to drive. That's I mean... True. Uh, it depends on Should what his drive specific is for. Drive is a special skill. Once it goes over one, you have to pick something. Wait, should we pop out and like tell them to talk to our boss, like to file a report or a complaint or something, so we have a paper trail of what needs to be done? I mean, probably our job here is kind of, you know, to improve standing, so solving arguments and disagreements is probably part of that. Yeah. Who would ever want to deal with a smart and sensible leader? That's ridiculous. I don't want to hear any of it. <laughs> Yeah, so, if, so have we moved on, or are we just I talking about that? I want to listen to a madman who yells about eating children for breakfast, not an individual who talks about the sensibility of accounting and properly keeping track of water supplies. Anyway, uh, you, whatever you drive by is your own prerogative. You are driving this vehicle. <laughs> the party as a whole. I mean, I guess I'll get out and try and, you know... Direct them to the proper authorities. You get out of, out of little sales pitch. You get out of your your, your your vehicle and declare that they should visit the authorities. To which the lady happily responds that there ain't no gosh darn authorities that go around her water supply. Well, there are well. now. We've been appointed to you know smooth things out and improve the process and stuff. Mm -hmm. Keep track of complaints and see how we can solve them. What, you're one of those city admin slickers who thinks they can just take anything from anyone because it's the common good? Nope. I mean, I don't intend on taking anything from anybody. I just want to you know, make sure Give. everyone's voices are heard. Listen, just because I'm the only one around here smart enough to build me a large old tub to get some water doesn't mean that everyone else gets the right to my water. And the, the guy in front of her just one. starts yelling like, Come on, you can't let everyone drown and die like that. Come on. Yeah. Why don't I'm... you just sell it? Yeah. Sell it for what? Goods and Are there services. goods? Goods and services? Goods? Yeah, clearly your water is in demand. Then other people might be able, might be willing to trade things for it. <laughs> Listen, I came. If you don't need, if you don't need no things. If at least talking to our boss can get your water, you know, offered to other people who may have Let some. I'm it. already sharing it with the people that I know. I'm not going to share it with some city slicker who doesn't got his sings in order. Oh my fucking god. Hmm? You good? No, 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 I'm good. That was Max. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was in character. Say, who the hell are you anyway? You don't look like locals. We're not. We're, we've just come in to assist with some managerial issues, I guess. We're well, consultants. Well, then you can take this managerial issue and uh, maybe put him somewhere he doesn't stand in my way. And she wears at, at the guy, who, by the way, is wearing distinctly, like... Uh, um, some office worker attire, but more suited for a Wild West kind of environment, you know. Oh, so basically, it had, office uh, attire, but with suspenders. Right? Yeah. Business suspenders cowboy ball, casual. Like, polo ties. Full <laughs> no, office attire, but it has the fringe on the uh, on the sleeves. <laughs> uh, the man rebuttals that <laughs> that across and Foven still belong under the administrative center of Rack and Gore, and as a result, he has the full right to enlist her assistance and cooperation. Yeah. Wait, are we working for that person? 
you know, it might help to figure out what the fuck's going on in this place, because this looks like it's more than just two people arguing. Yeah. It seems to be a systemic one. It's possible like that they have affiliations that are coloring their particular tastes and flavors. Mm. Well, for future reference for uh, managerial records, could I get your names and affiliations? Just so we know who to contact. Okay. Uh, okay. The issue. Just, just for the report. This is where I have to pull something up. Uh, where do I have all these things? Uh -huh. Why do I not just have a neat little, little section? Uh, press the button that makes the GM have to do things. Well, it's not that much of a problem. It's just that I'm a big old idiot. You could put me in a box and I just roll over. Okay, here we go. Um, he belongs to Reckongol City Administration, which is the so sort of go government? They're the people who run things like the post station and all that, and, and keep the road somewhat in order. Uh... They're, they're really just local people who aren't the company in terms of business and involvement. It's, it's not really a city as you imagine it. Like, listening to him talk about it, you're like, this is not what a proper government looks like at all. There's no real structure or accountability. There's a mayor, but what does that even mean in this context? Um, they claim to be dem democratic, but then it's like, whoa... You had the same mayor for years? Huh. Hmm. Um, she seems to be part of... She's not local. She's not from Rackengore Go itself. She's part of the Encras Fovent uh, Land Oilers Collective, who are a bunch of farmers who got really pissy at the fact that these big city slickers are handing out the sheets, and they don't want none of that. So they unionized, effectively. You can call uh, the lady Christina Burt. 40 years old. Nice looking lady. Should we should we introduce consumerism to break the communism? What? 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 This is this is not what? I don't know what's going on anymore. Congratulations. To break to break <laughs> To break the union, just introduce, just introduce consumerism. Oh. Yeah, let's not. <sighs> the and lady the, the does not have any patience, so when you start talking to this guy about, okay, so where are you from? As you shove a journalist microphone in his face, uh, she just starts walking off past him into the bar to get herself a drink. I mean, that's one way to break up an argument. <laughs> I mean, certainly. And mister, what's your name? He is Aiden Downs. Gosh, I wish the people would take City Admin seriously for once. Maybe we could organize and do something proper instead of just yelling at each other all the time. Well, that's what we're here for. Like what's keeping y'all from organizing? Oh, keeping it's, it's, you it's, well, those... Those those collective folks ain't exactly helping with that big old idea of basically organizing by themselves, but refusing to organize anyway. Who am I supposed to talk to with them? They're all oh we're all together, but we ain't. And then there's the the dang company who's taking bribes left and right, not running things on time or running them properly. You've been on that rail probably. You've seen it at the very least. It's a mess. It is a mess. If I ain't doing anything to improve it. So we're trying to push for, like, we'll take it and we'll fix it ourselves. But then they're like, ha, ha, ha. And then I got shot at. Shot? Yeah. yeah. You know, they're discouraging me from pursuing my current method of action. Shot. With a gun. Bang, bang. You know what being shot means. That's yeah. unfortunate. Now, y you say that, but you out-of-towners are sometimes, uh... A little slow on the uptake. I have been known to be slow on the uptake sometimes. That's how you get jack of all trades too. You should just keep being slow until you're fast. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, it's not about the slow, it's about the uptake. So uh, why are you here dumping. anyway? This ain't exactly a tourist destination. Well, not yet. 
we were sent by the company that wants to improve things around here to essentially bolster forces and improve things. Oh, so we're yeah. going, going around town trying to find out ways in which we can do that. Sorry, there was like a lot of... Um, he thinks for a moment and goes, wait, 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 wait. You, you, you wouldn't be uh, part of that, uh, what's it called? Who recently came on over. They had a fancy guy who lives up uh, in that big old house. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Huh. Well, maybe he should come in contact with our uh, local mayor and see if they can talk about some things as it were. Mm -hmm. That'll be a pretty we'll decent that in mind. I think you'll find a little bit of negotiating, a little bit of handshaking. Maybe, maybe some some good stuff can get done around here. Uh, he provides you with a destination, namely where you can find the mayor, who he introduces as Roxy Powell. Roxy Powell. Yep. Bit of a hard and ass, what's... but hey. And what's the destination? Uh, essentially, you just you can just go there now. You just know where to find yeah, it. The, the maze. Okay. Office. It pops up on the map. Like, ding. Ding. Like he, like he describes the building to you. Like, oh, it's just a nice little building. It's got a garden in front that's really dry. Sorry about that. Why oh, can't? It's okay. Well, if we're, if we're done here, I think I could use a drink myself. Get the slurp. Yeah. All right, well, you're taking care of that, but weren't you here for the post office? Yeah. Should we move on to the post office? We continue on our path now that we have a little more information. You head on down to the post office. You are greeted by quite an interesting sight. There is indeed like a little notice board of like, hey, I need this, I want that. Um, there's calls for like collective action, such as like, hey, let's build water. I heard of this thing called a dam. If you, we can maybe dam up the lake, and they're not very... You can tell that the technology... The, the, the smarts are there, but the technology just ain't. Big ideas, but no way to implement them. Additionally, there is a surprising amount of mail and packages and things that obviously need to get delivered by train, considering that they're in this massive pile just in the back office. It's a single open room, by the way, this this post office, like a big open wooden building. You can see the offices and the desks in the back, and the little front desk too, the little sitting area, bulletin board, everything. Hmm. Person behind the desk is is, is 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 one of those, you know, it's it's one of those old office workers with those round little glasses. Exactly what you'd expect from a post office. Well, what do you want to do here? Kids? Post office time. Arthur, what do you think you can do here? I mean, I'm just trying not to get into any trouble. <laughs> if we can take a look at something practical that we have the resources to do right now without interacting with too many people, I'm down for that. Well, maybe you could take a look at the notice board. Yeah. There's, I will. There are quite a few things stapled to the notice board. One of which is to join the uh, landowners collective. Another is to remember to vote, although that seems to be an old notice. There is a ever thickening stack of exactly the same pamphlet put down in the exact same spot for join with the company. Get a good job. If farming it working out for you, sell your land, etc. Uh, there's also some small personal requests, like specific individuals who need a little help moving some things around, uh, or like, I'll, uh, my cattle's gone loose, gonna need a few extra hands. Uh, it doesn't look like anyone ever removes old notices all that often, so there's a lot of them that is like, oh, that's that's a little right. old, ain't it? <laughs> are, any of, are any of them actually dated? Nope. What, what's the rush? Well, if anybody, if any of those look fresh enough, I'd like to see if any of those need extra help. Um, notices are still relevant. So what kind of... Well, 
I thought you said you didn't want to get involved with people. I, yeah, exactly, because helping move stuff is not talking to people. <laughs> oh, my. Um, well, you have a car, which can carry lots of goods quite easily, and there are some... At the Vorstein estate, there were those big ones that had, like, a section in the back you could easily put, like, several sofas into if you did it right. Um, taking a look at this, there are some you people who are... It. There are some people who are planning to move to greener pastures as a result of the drought in the area as of recently. Um, so you could help with that if you really wanted to. Is it realistic, or is it, like, on the other side of the equator? No, no, it's in the area. These are all notices for, like, the local area. So it's either Rackengor, or the Fovent, or Encras. All right, well, if everybody else is interested in figuring things out with the mayor and whatnot, there are some to borrow the cart. There are some other minor things on this notice board, such as people who need some help with mechanical things. Like, I have a water pump windmill, and it needs fixing because it's dry and rusty, and there's no water, so the pumping mechanism got all busted up. Oh, you know what? This is uh, something a bit more up my alley, so I can go and check that out. Heck yeah. This one seems to be quite local, so you might be able to walk it. Like, the way these things are set up is hilarious. They, they they, basically have instructions. If you leave the post office, follow these exact, like, left, right, left, right, and you'll get there. Okay, I'll take a photo with yeah. my... Uh, I want to join in on that one. So you're going to go fix someone's windmill? Yeah. Nice. Well, what is everyone else going to look for on this fine notice board? There seems to be a fresh request by a certain... Uh, what's her name? Let me look it up. Uh, a certain Louise Watts. Oh, well. She's looking for individuals who are interested in learning the finer intricacies of electromechanical engineering. And someone already took a piece of charcoal and just drew some, some, some mean words on it. Like, ah, you nerd. And stuff. Hey. Can I smudge out the meanness? You make a big black stain, but it's better than the mean words. <laughs> Thank you. I think I would definitely mm -hmm. like, like to check in on Louise and see what's up, and also maybe get her to cooperate with us. As you stand around here, uh, an angry person comes in, sees the stack of Oop. of mail, like you immediately notice his eyes go there, and he starts yelling, at, "Gosh, listen, I I paid to get." <sighs> How long is this going to take? He's like, listen, I don't determine when the company decides to move those trains. Oh, James, oh. listen. Can't you, like, hire them? He's like, listen, we don't really get paid enough. The company asks a lot for, for, for private travel. And without the cattle being as common as they used to be, it's not exactly like we do a lot of delivery. So I'm sorry to tell you, sir. But things just ain't as they used to be. Hmm. So they used to be a functioning system, eh? It sounded like before the drought, they had a way more like cattle growth and things to sell, so the train had more reason to keep going. Mm. Mm -hmm. We will remember this. Yeah, it sounds like something we can do with in the future to deal yeah. with the train company and try to improve yeah. that connection. By the way, and I think you'll find this quite hilarious, you're pretty sure that if you drove back to the star downport with this car, you'd be there faster than by train. <laughs> <laughs> it was 400 kilometers, that thing went like 30, 40, that thing can easily go like 200, if on a straight bit of land. Uh, <laughs> vroom, vroom. <laughs> Let's fix windmills. Alright, someone wanted to go see Louise Watts. But, like, didn't the rest of the gang have their own stuff? You can split up. That's oh. the only place where we could probably split This up. isn't D&D. You're not going to walk into a dungeon and suddenly get attacked by seven basilisks and eat the whole party there. <laughs> okay. Okay, in that case. That's your thing. Uh, I think getting information from the mayor would probably be a good idea. Mm. At the very Wait, least. you sure we can't attack the seven basilisks? Basilisks? Uh, five basilisks and most. Okay, okay. You're good then. <laughs> yeah. If anything, it's more fun if, if you're you're brawling with, like, lower numbers. There's something thrilling about isolated squabbles. Also, this game really isn't designed for, like, large-scale continuous battles like D&D is. Like... So, hey. Don't get shot. Yeah, it hurts. Relax. Unless you're Arthur in his fucking <laughs> robot man suit. <laughs> 
I Arthur probably has left not... it behind. Yeah, Arthur please. hasn't felt pain in like seven years. All right, kids. Yeah, unless you unless you roll above uh, twelve damage, <laughs> I won't even feel it. I imagine at this point that the party is standing outside and they're talking about how they're going to do things today. Yeah. If you'll pardon my French. All right. So what's the plan? I think Max and Arthur would plan to go and fix up that windmill. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, if we can walk, we don't need the car, so you can have it for now. Lisa's going to go to the mayor, to the mayor's office, City Hall. Lisa, do you need, like, you know, a backup, a moral support person with you at the mayor's? Uh, I should be okay. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, at worst, they just run circles around me. But. Listen, Lisa has that winning smile. You've got this. You've got this, hun. Yep. Give it an honest go. <laughs> Big thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then I'm going to go you. to Louise. Cool. How about we start yeah. off with the people kind of... Um, oh? Hmm? So, are there any other like mechanically inclined problems that people are having? Or is it just a windmill? Um, you know what? I imagine that the stockyard probably has like, hey, if you want to help out, our train got fucked up, and they blame it on you guys. Like some out of towners started messing with the train. Right, we tried I'll to start... unmess the train. Right, I'll start trying to help out with the train then. Cool. The party splits into four parties, and I lied. There are seven basilisks everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna count all of them, and I'm gonna come back home with seven basilisks. Gosh, <laughs> gosh, Arthur, why does your mom that you have seven basilisks? But can basilisks stand a taser? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> all right, we'll start off with Arthur and Max. You take a walk through town. No one's actually going all that far, so everyone's just walking. The car's just parked in front of the, the post office. That's fine. I don't think anyone here can drive or knows how the doors even operate. So hey, that's great. It's a bit of a walk. It's warm weather, Arthur. It's dry. You have... Presu I assume you guys have water and all with you. Don't worry. It's assumed that you're not insane. And went out of here with no water or, like, a bite to eat if you need it. You eventually see... Like, it's obvious to tell which one of the windmills is the problem. Because in the distance there's a windmill that goes... Like, it turns a little bit, and then it clinks, and then it goes back. And then it turns, clink, back, turn, clink, back. And it creates this faint, distant clicking noise. Like a clock. But it's irregular, and it's very annoying if you were here for long. That's amusing. Um, sir, would you like to have a clock or a windmill? <laughs> What's more important? Uh, on your approach, you see something that the guy who owns the windmill probably has to do with on a regular basis. is someone like yelling at him, like, Come on, man, fix the dang thing! I can't sleep! <laughs> He's standing on the porch of a two-story building in front of his little farmstead area. Grumbling about the fact that he doesn't know how to fix his own dang windmill. Grumbling, I'm like, man, I should never, try, never ask the cone to make that dang thing for me. I don't even know how to fix the dang thing. And they don't want to help me either without for cheap. Hmm. You approach, I presume. Yes. <laughs> we'll have some decency and introduce yourselves. This is the part where I remember to pull up the fancy name generator to give you a fancy random name to work with. <laughs> Alright, I'll introduce yeah. myself and my buddy. I'm going to ask to whom do we owe the pleasure? Melvin. Melvin O'Connor. He holds out his hand. He's got a firm handshake if you shake it. Yes, I will shake it. Firm shake. Handshakes are important. He has a distinctive scar on his face, which, not like a weapon or anything, he might have fallen and hurt himself on the way down. Oh! <gasps> Remember that little comic with a dragon who had a book fall on his face? Oh god, he's like, this scar is just because I'm cool. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, how may I, uh, help you? Is this We've some, seen... are you some kind of interplanetary assassin? I wish I would actually get well paid. <laughs> um, I like humor. The... The only thing we're here to assassinate is that clanking noise. Oh, gosh. This, uh, 
I talked with the company. They told me they knew some guys out down by the damn port who had this thing called a water pump mill. So I had it installed. This thing, by the way, is not small. It is, like, if at the very least, three, five stories high. It's really tall. Gotcha. But it's, like, all prefabricated. And like, it's, it's, it's some pretty fancy stuff. It's not, like, tech level 13. But it is pretty high-end materials and, and stuff. All right. So it's... Is it like Ikea stuff? Um, the way to best describe this is a lot of colonists, when they go off to, to wacky planets to have fun times, they get these high-end material, but very simplistic devices that are easy to maintain, but still last forever. That makes sense. What I was meaning is, if it's basically Ikea stuff, you build it yourself, maybe they forgot a couple parts or had a couple parts. Possible. Before. These things come Possible. with manuals and everything. That's what I would like to check. It's like, do you still have the packaging and all that in the manual? No, the Planet company had all of it, but... Uh, uh, actually, you would remember most of how this thing goes together, so your brain is like, I have a good idea as to when something might be wrong. Makes sense. Is there anything I can look up on my phone on the local library? I assume there is at least some sort of coverage. I presume yeah. that most basic traveler phones, when they leave the, the, the Imperium net, shall we say, will take with them survival things, including like prefabricated things that are often used. So yes. Uh, okay. I would like to check what model this is specifically and then look it up and then see if any parts are actually missing. Uh, so you want to perform a full inspection? Yes. Well, how about May before you perform... Thank you. I was going to say you should probably ask first. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was going to do. Listen, if you can fix that dang thing, you'll be a godsend. All right. I don't just... know any gods who send out engineers, but I'm going to try. Well, that is a great question now, ain't it? <laughs> Is there a god of engineers? Probably. Somewhere. I don't know. Religion's a bit funky when you're out in space talking to animals, people, and bugs, and, and plants. Yeah. The, the, the omnipresent god kind of loses his charm when you travel between planets. Point is, you make your way over to a big old windmill. It's very imposing up close, and it has the little maintenance ladder these things I have. Um, imagine one of those cowboy farm mills, but it's like several times as big. So it's basically like some sort of water tower, yep. essentially. There's a big old pump stack thing that goes all the way down to the ground and hooks up to this little water tank at the top. Gotcha. Is the internal mechanism exposed, or is it mostly inside? Um, the more coarse parts that probably wouldn't suffer as much dust-related damage and stuff are exposed. Gotcha. I'll start with those. All right. Uh, this is the part where some checks have to be made. Dryden, do you want to help him? I can probably, since this thing is so big, I can probably call out parts that I need to be taking a look at. Oh my fucking god, this goddamn comic you posted. <sighs> I love that he plays it up so much. <laughs> like, her, I'm scary. <laughs> he just hit himself with a book. He, he gets into his job. Man, I love that everyone's like, man, he's just so tough. Anyway, you decide to take a look at the thing. Yeah. For this, you get to roll me your mechanical skill. You get a plus two modifier because you have the full schematic of the thing available. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. When I punch in the modifier, is it do I just put in two or two. do I type? I think it? putting in just two works. We'll see if it works. All right, let's take a look. Jesus. Uh, wow. <laughs> You're good at this. Um, I was training for this for 10 years. God damn it, I was <laughs> training for this. You hit your head. Taking a look around this thing and kind of going Someone off. Out. You're playing off the cuff here because you never specifically train how to make these things. You you take spend some time climbing up, climbing back down. Little, little, yes. how, what's your endurance? Uh, Modify. My endurance is actually plus zero. Okay, in that case, you're not all that tuckered out from climbing up the ladder a few times. Um, you come to the discovery that the big problem is the where the large windmill axle connects to the pumping system is it, 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 there's some random debris in there. Um, if you've ever been to the Midwest, you'll know that tumbleweeds release seed pods, and they don't always come in the same size. This thing's just clogged up, and it just needs to get scrubbing and cleaning and, and picking all the things out and making sure all the gears align. All right. Can I do this safely without jamming my hand in there? See, now there's the, 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 the quick question, ain't it? Yeah. 
Because if so, I'll just use like a broom. This will be a mechanic engineer check. Mechanic. Uh, you'll always succeed at this task. It's just that you take damage if you fail. Ah, makes sense. Sorry this time. Uh, same. You don't get any bonuses from your your little book this time, and it's dexterity that you use instead of your int. Oh, dexterity. Hold on. Nine. Luckily, you managed to do this without hurting yourself. With a little bit of of poking and prodding, and using some sticks instead of your hands, mm -hmm. you manage to unclog the mechanism. After a moment, the thing starts to churn politely, and you even hear some water eventually flow through the pipes again. Good. The guy down there is like, "How? Gosh darn it!" How in tarnation that thing is working again. Yes. I'm going to tell him exactly what happened. As you climb and down, you notice that the little tap, there's a little spigot you can use to drain the water, is open, uh -huh. so the water immediately starts leaking out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I will probably close it down for now. Or at least, considering it's been standing like this for a while, there's probably gross water coming out. First. There is gr very gross water coming out, thank you. Well, in that case, I'll just wait for it to go through. Until clean water comes out, and then I'll just close it up. As you stand there, he comes over, and immediately just pats you on the shoulder, like, look at that, look at that. Yeah, while he's here, I was going to tell him what happened. I was like, basically, the tumbleweeds, the local tumbleweeds have clogged up the mechanism. Mm -hmm. If something like that happens, just poke them with a stick, or like, put a little hook on it and drag them out, or just, you know, put a notice again. I'll swing by when I have the time. You see, he's a little surprised, but to be fair, he doesn't... <laughs> he does not have the perspective necessary to understand that tumbleweeds are freaking sturdy. Especially when they're stuck in industrial mechanisms, or how much force those things exert. So it's like, ah, I gotcha. Gives you yeah, okay just, sign. <laughs> just don't try to burn them, because that's usually a problem. At this point, however, you've been at it for a while. Yes. Like, this did not happen that's over the course too. of a few minutes. So at this point, you're a little tucked out. He's like, hey, come on inside. My wife will, will, will make us something nice. Sounds mighty fine, thank you. In the meantime, someone yes. is going to take this to City Hall. <coughs> oh, geez, and obviously I'm going to invite my buddy, even if they're missing. City Hall is, well, it's City Hall. It's got the sign saying, the, the City Hall head office, city admin, all the things you would need. It has a little balcony where you can give little speeches if you really wanted to. It's a multi-story, multi-room structure, unlike the post office, which is a bit more simplistic. Making your way inside, you can see that there's like a little lady sitting behind the desk who is flicking through a variety of sheets of paper, cross-referencing things. Oh, important work. Uh-huh. Uh, who, who, who? She squints at you. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Lisa Gecko, and I, I am here to... As a representative of the uh, company put in place over in the big mansion, over in the... Ah, yes, yes, the new resident. Uh, yeah, we were... Well, my... I'm here to essentially get a general gist of the goings-on in the village by speaking to the mayor, if he... If he or she is available. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, dear. I don't really have the time to, to, to go talk to the mayor. And she points at all these, these papers she has. I've recently oh. been gathering a, a, a variety of complaints and financial reports, and it's all so much work. Oh, a variety of complaints? That's kind of what we're here to sort out. Well, then so. maybe you can help organize it a little bit. I, c I can certainly try. Okay, so you try to help out sorting these papers. Um, the, the the way this comes down to it's like, hey, help me sort these papers, and you can go take them to the mayor yourself, and you can see sort things out from there. It'll be a nice icebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> Roll me some admin, using intelligence. Your education won't really help, you're, you're playing it by ear, because these are not like standard forms as you're used to. Oof. Um, well, this isn't an average rule, this is a little easier, it's a bit more routine. You're just, like, going through papers. So, by the end, you have a neat stack of what you need, baby. And the little yeah. old lady is like, oh, th th thank you, that really helps clear things up a little bit. It always takes so much time, and then it always comes in these big bunches instead of just little itty-bitty bits. 
Um, the mayor is up up the stairs in the back, on the second floor, over to where the balcony is. You can't miss it. Okay, thank you very much for your help. Oh no, thank you for your help, dear. <laughs> you go up the stairs, creak, creak, creak. Building's a bit old, but it's still standing. Uh, the mayor's office has what you expect. It has a little plaque, a little metal plaque embossed on it, the name of the mayor, which you can't imagine is all that practical if the mayor is democratically elected, but whatever. <laughs> it's probably a big cupboard full of those. Oh my god, for every single person in town, who knows. <sighs> Point is, the, the mayor's office is there, and with these papers, you do indeed have a perfect icebreaker slash excuse to be in the office. <laughs> ah, let me... Let me pull up the sheet so that I have the mayor information available. There we go. Entering the office. Do you need, so do you need some mayor information? <laughs> Entering the office, you see... Well, Roxy Powell is... Um, she doesn't look all that buff, but she sure looks like she's a, a, a tough nut. You know, she's got that aura of sophistication to her. Not that old, 31, getting on. She sits behind the desk and would like to immediately know who is entering her office. Uh, hello, my name is Lisa Gecko. I'm a representative of the... Downport? Uh, of the business over in the mansion in the distance. Ah, yes. Mr. Willard, was he? Uh, yes. Lovely. What brings you here, uh, then? Well, essentially I've been sent to give a lay of the land and what exactly the we can do to help the populace and given the big stack of requests and complaints that I've been given it's probably a lot mm. yes 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 a lot of complaints a lot of people are complaining about things not wanting to contribute either like oh well the city should do this and the city should do that but anyone helping anyone paying no 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 the company sure isn't helping they don't pay their dues and the people in the collective are like we're not part of your town I can't get anything done like this. I can understand that. It must be very complicated and frustrating. Certainly. Well, we are essentially here to help, hopefully make that a little easier by fixing some things and making things run a bit smoother. So any assistance you can offer would certainly go to further that. Hmm. Hmm. This is the part where even I, the GM, must think. What is the what is the big thing that she would like give off to some random person who showed up? And it's like I want to help, and it's like either you solve this and I get a big benefit, or you're gone and I wanted to, to deal with this random person in my office anymore. Um. Oh, I got a nice one for you. There's a lake nearby, Lake Rackin, stuck between the hills. You must have seen it from the train at some point. Um, I vaguely remember seeing a lake. I have ordered that some water be recovered from there in order to keep this town, at the very least, uh, not in worry of any, you know, dehydration problems. Unfortunately, despite my best efforts, I've heard that some thieves stole the things. Now, I don't know how hard barrels are to make on your fancy down ports and space things, but down here, barrels take time and energy to produce and manufacture. It takes time to cut the wood, put the metal together, to tar them up so they're waterproof. They've stolen the water and the barrels, which is impacting our ability to recover water. At this rate, this town will start to suffer dehydration in a short while. So if you would just take a look around there and see about these water thieves, I would be very, very glad. It does seem like a very pressing issue. We met some people that's... It's very early. expensive. Those barrels were on loan. People seem to be getting a bit frustrated with the lack of water, so definitely shorting that, sorting that out will be a good priority. It's good to see that you have a good head on your shoulders. If you can take care of that, maybe we can discuss about um, meeting you or your fine boss or something. And uh, build some yes, better relations from there. That would be a good idea. I want to see if he's capable of handling things around here the right way first. If you catch my drift, wink wink. <laughs> Pass on the information to our superiors and the rest of the crew. Delightful. Now, if you'll please just put these papers on my desk and be on your way, I'll be happy to hear of positive news in the future. Perfect. I'll report in shortly. She takes this bottle she has, 
and pours herself one out. As just remembering those circumstances make her go, Ugh. The migraine's coming back. I need, I need, I need good old Dr. Booze. Someone is going to visit the stockyard and railway station. Who was that again? Ariel Reynolds? Yes. You're heading on over to the rail yard. It's busy. It's loud. It's noisy. Hammer hitting metal. People carrying things. Yelling and cursing as they drop said things and make lots of noise or hit them foots. It's an industrious place where the blacksmiths are located. Metal bands for barrels, wheels for the train or cars. Everything around here. This, this is the industrial sector. And the air smells like it. Leather tanning. What a disgusting process. <laughs> uh, is, would there be like an administration office anywhere for the... So I can figure out like, who the boss of this part of town is. Um, you can literally bump anyone on the shoulder and learn who runs the company. So yes. Um, the company is owned by the Richards family. Specifically by Jude Richards, a 46-year-old woman who has a tremendous amount of influence. Uh, she's the major of, of the company. She didn't start it, but she sure as hell owns it nowadays. Is that what you wanted to know, or anything else? Uh, yeah, so... So was, was the notice, like, for people to help fix it, or was it more that we have been called out? The, the, the notice is um, someone called them out on them not maintaining their trains at all, so they're like, hey, if anyone here thinks they're, they're, they're a goody two-shoes, they can come and help. It's almost as if they're specifically calling you out, but the notice is probably just like trying to recruit people to their calls. Like, hey, help us out. We're stopping say, the outsiders. Yeah. Did it say who to, uh, who to talk to? Or was it just a... Was it just vague? Uh, a certain Elliot Buckner. Oh, I'll try and search around for him then to try and help out. Elliot Buckner is a lady, in fact. She seems to be running the tra the rail station. Uh, once you're inside the... Gosh, what are they called again? Where they keep all the train wagons and stuff. Train yard, I think. Wagon yard. Something along those lines. <laughs> Point is, it's the place where they keep all the train and the cars and the wagons. Um, once you arrive there, you see this lady coordinating things, yelling at people who are being stupid and dumb and need to stop being stupid and dumb or she'll get real mad. Um, the defining trait seems to be that she is quick of wit. She quickly points around, seems aware of the situation, and notices you almost instantly. And the first thing she says to you is that you better be careful, boy. This is a dangerous place for people like you. Injuries happen, accidents happen. What do you want? There you go. Rail yard is the proper name. If you're here to complain about the fact that the trains ain't running, you gotta take it up with the riches, not with me. No, I'm here on, on, on the... Because of the notice about the train. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some idiot decided to mess with the mechanisms in between the trains. You know the things that hook them together? I don't know what the hell they did, but it made things hell of a lot worse than our usual little MacGuffins do. Um, if yeah. you want context, you fixed it temporarily, but whatever jury rigging they do did not agree with that. I'll, I'll, I'll sort it. I'll, I'll take your grievances to them when I next see them. Mm -hmm. I think I know who did it. Mm -hmm. Do I want to help fix the train or something? Absolutely. What makes you think you know how to dang well fix a train instead of making things worse? Well, I've got... To be fair, most of my mechanical uh, ex uh, experience hasn't been on trains. It's been more high-tech systems, like reactors. <laughs> but I'm, just, I, I'm sure I can figure out how to... Listen, a, 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 a steel pipe is a steel pipe. There's, there's not much to know, you know? True, yeah. <laughs> okay, well... It's pretty clear that she doesn't want you to be here, and that she doesn't really like the fact that some like weirdo that. showing up out of nowhere trying to help. So she takes you over to, let's just say, a very difficult task of train engineering. It's like some of the boiler piping, and she wants you like, hey, come on, fix this. Come on. Show me you can fix this, and I'll let you handle the mechanisms. This is a 
a check, but it's a bit more difficult. Which is to say, this is a mechanic check, but it's difficult. Got to up that difficulty right. a little bit. Okay. Uh, if you want to, don't forget, you can take extra time to reduce the difficulty by one stage. Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll take my time just to show that I'm not. I I'm not trying to rush things. I'm not trying to be. It's foolish about it. Yeah. Ooh. So that just make it average. Yep. And uh, intelligence. Probably. You're, tr you're kind of improvising with what you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ooh. You can succeed, but you'll probably hurt yourself in the process. <laughs> I probably burnt myself on the pipes when I forgot <laughs> to wear gloves. Ooh, ow. Ooh. Okay. Unfortunately, you thought you were doing a, 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 a smart one. Um, you take one point of damage to your endurance. Um, so you just put one in the red little box below it as you scald your hand on some of the steam. Ooh. <sighs> However, you do manage to get the pipes to work now. Even if the whistle sounds a bit weird now. Whatever. That that that's probably fine. Rail yard. Oh man, those things are huge. They look so weird. Trains are weird. They don't go on the same track. You've managed to fix the train and it's slightly impressed lovely old Elliot. Which by the way, is not with an O, it's with an E. Elliot. Well, would you look at that? At least someone here is willing to be a little bit careful when it matters. If you'd done that, it'd be a little bit more of a rush job. You probably would have burnt your hand off. <laughs> Don't worry, they grow back. Now then. So, about that mechanism. She shows you over to where the mechanism is. You have no fucking clue what happened, but th what the hell? How does that even happen? Um. Imagine one of those industrial accidents where, like, you have no fucking clue what the original item was or what happened to it. It's just this rung piece of metal. But this is... This can't be what Max did, right? This is not Max's fault. <laughs> this is someone tried to fix things, and they took a sledgehammer to a wooden wall to fix it. To hammer in the nail, you know? <laughs> so it's like the... So it's like the coupling mechanism. The, the coupling mechanism, by the looks of it, your best estimate is that it's going to need a complete refurbishment. The biggest problem with the mechanism as it stands is that it's going to take a significant amount of force to unwrench the, the hook itself. Once that's taken care of, you think it's probably fine. You could just fix it. But no one around here seems to have been capable of disconnecting the two. Is, that, has the, is there like a sturdy enough like... Pry bar? Metal or, Ooh, okay. or something. Okay. Um, you can give me athletics strength. And you can give yourself a plus two bonus because you're using a big old pry bar. Okay. Uh... You see Elliot, by the way, standing nearby. She's paying attention, like kind of curious what your plan is here, bucko. <gasps> I'm not getting lucky on the rolls. Don't forget, once per session you get a reroll. <laughs> I'm going to reroll that, absolutely. Yeah, rolling a 2 and a 1, you probably want to <laughs> give that another go. Well, that's better. Okay. Yeah. You managed... Oh, no, I did, forgot to add the 2. Forgot that to add okay, the two. in that case, you actually succeed without a problem. With a... You feel like you're going to put your back out, but then there's this snap, and you fall over and stumble over the rails backwards a little bit. Uh, the two wagons disconnect. Uh, the tension held by the metal that has now been disconnected, like a rubber band, they kind of slide apart. Elliot rubs the back of her head and goes, Would you look at that? Didn't think you had it any there, Buck. <laughs> Where'd you able to get muscles like that? Surpri working in, zero in like military grade spaceships often requires, like, Military grade what's it? Where do you work out? At yeah. the library. <laughs> I have to I had to ja unjam a lot of heavy things, basically. When things didn't work. Stomp. 
She's looking at her, she's like, don't you guys have, like, robots and stuff up there? Robots don't tend to work as fast as humans. Well, I dang well hope so. At least in my so. experience. Dang. And Arrow was thinking you guys, um, I'll turn the noodle alarms in space. Only if you don't exercise. <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't really have anything for you for helping out. I wasn't expecting anyone to fix this thing. I was expecting a couple of idiots to hurt themselves and realize just how hard this work is. So, um... She... Thinks for a moment. And then she, uh, goes, You know what? I'll tell one of the human that you're, uh... Good for a round of drinks. How about that? I'll put it on my tab. I would love that. Gotta go tell that who man first, but hey. So what's space money like, anyway? This, as in, like, to handle? You don't really handle it. More just a thing. What? It's like a, a what? It's Even I was confused. No, it's like like credits. They're more like a. It's sort of like an imaginary value, I guess. Wait, oh, so like the human, I guess. Huh. Weird. I thought you'd have like uh, golden coins or something fancy like that. Gold's valuable, right? Yeah, gold's still valuable. Weird. You guys are weird. Well, luckily, I ain't in space. I'm standing with both feet on the ground. But yeah, you go have yourself a nice uh, round on me. I'm just glad it's just taken care of or I'll get yelled at again. You know the Richards? Uh, I don't think so. Nah, they got no chill, man. You got, you got Jude, who honestly at this point is probably going to build a big old robot factory where she can. She gets the money for some reason. They got Carter, dumb as a gosh darn brick. Just does what he's told. And uh, you'll feel it. And then there's that Jaden guy. Oh, man. I think he's too clever for his own good. I think he's going to dump and run the second this place goes down too much. So, uh, lovely family of very reliable, loving, loving people. Ugh. But they pay me, and they pay me well enough to keep me around. So, catch my drift. Yeah. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you haven't need anything made for your fancy space stuff, um, you can go talk to Dylan Bailey. He's the guy who runs most of the blacksmiths and forges around here. Do you, can you make electronics here? You know, what are they even good for? Like I had one once, and it just zapped my hand. Yeah, you got a point. Like, he told me, oh, this thing can do all kinds of stuff, and then I grabbed it, and it went crack, and then my hand went ow. Nothing beats the old manual stuff. <laughs> well, at the very least, the so, manual stuff you can push with a stick until it works. Exactly. I like the cut of your jib, boy. If you ever need anything, you can always come, come to my door. Or Dylan. He and I are good friends. Progressive maintenance is great. Um, as you have a nice little moment, there's one more person who we need to go through. Who was it again? Hello. And where were they going? I think they were visiting <coughs> someone. <laughs> oh no, man, let's... <laughs> you good, bud. Someone visiting Louise Watts. Considering Aww. my strength and end, you're both at 12. This is... <laughs> <laughs> to the rest of the party. <laughs> yeah, just that in a metal suit. Yes, and also in a metal suit. <laughs> That's to compensate for my pathetic endurance. I have three twelves. One is my strength, one is my int, and the last one is my armor. Bam! Yes, exactly. <sighs> Our lovely I lady, Erica Yang, makes her way over, uh, socially maneuvering herself as to find out where the hell this person lives. It's easy enough. People around her are like, I just go that way. As long as you don't look like you're about to murder someone, they're just going to point you in the right direction. <laughs> Not at all. The She's just looking like, very, you know, very calm, very polite. 
The Watts family house is quite an interesting little building. It's a bit ramshackle at the edge of town. Uh, it's impressive that anyone from this family could afford to send someone to space college. But hey. Apparently they could. They sure did. Sure don't know why the fuck they're going to get the resources necessary to kickstart an electronics industry in this town, but... Mm -hmm. um, outside is, little... is an old man sitting in, in a, big old, a big old seat, like a big old rocking chair, smoking a pipe. And also there is a, a young... Gosh, I accidentally... Okay. Is a young uh, boy... Uh, a little, a little Varger boy, like one of those dog people, who's whittling a piece of wood. He's quite good at. It. Oh, babies. Yes. Can I like stroll up and like wink at the old dude and then ask the kid what you got there, buddy? You know. Um. Well, I just got this, and he holds up the item for you, and. What's that? What are those animals called again? That are around here, not a horse, but the other one. Terran horses are big uh, good. The Kian. Kian. Yeah, he, he seems to be whittling a Kian. It's a bit rough, mm -hmm. but it's impressive for a kid of his age. Like he sure, he sure is trying. Hey, if you got spare time. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's looking but, real nice. Mhm. Mm I try my best. It's a bit tough though. Stuff ain't easy. Mm. Being cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> that that is actually a good one. Uh, huh. do you maybe know a Louise? Yeah, that's my big because... sis. She's twice as old as I am. Wow. Wow, that's well. How old are you? That sounds like a lot to be twice as old as someone. I'm one fifth the age of old Jasper, my 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 my, my, my dad over there. Oh God, it's a guy from my problems. Oh my God. Gotcha. <laughs> Well, do you mind pointing me to where Louise is? Probably Because ups. she's crafting really too. Probably Up. upstairs? Mm-hmm. Okay. Joke. And like, can't turn to old dude and like, do you mind if I go pay a visit? Mm, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and the grandpa, like, he's chill with people walking in his house. I mean, he's definitely got his eye on you. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Like, so... I just met Louise. That said, Lu Louise probably talked outside. about the people that she met on the train, and you were the one who like, had this discussion with her about the pretending, right? Mm hmm So yeah, he probably is like, you look like that person. It's okay. I probably, but I'm just being nice to a kid. Do you, do you know what it's like to be bullied by a 12-year-old? Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> you make your way upstairs, uh, unimpeded yeah. by the old man, who's just like, mm-hmm, as he rocks back and forth. Uh, there, there isn't much in terms of individual rooms. There is like the the large open second floor bedroom area where two beds have been put, and then there's like a little closed off section where you presume the third bed is that is necessary. Uh, Louise is sitting behind a small desk, taking some notes. Uh, she is racking her brain over a large amount of numbers. Hmm. Um, a close. Like a little hmm? knocky knock. On the door, on the doorway. There is no doorway. Like you go up the stairs, and you're just in this large room. <laughs> and on the banister, any Clank wooden walk. surface that's sufficient to like announce a presence. Oh hey, and how are you? Howdy. Well, mm -hmm. just doing some chores in town, trying to you know get a feel of the place. You're looking busy. Yeah, I've only been back for one day, and I'm trying to figure out how to make things work numerically. Doing the paperwork, you know. Oh yeah. The accounting. Do you business. need any help? The uh, accounting? you any good with accounting? You are not, by the way. You have admin. no admin skill. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm not good, but I am hopeful, and I would not mind learning. If only you Plus had I science, mathematics. Seven. Yeah, yeah. Well, if there's, if you need to find a genealogy of, like, the genetics <laughs> of a number, I can probably help with that one. Or if you want to check if a number is an alien, but that's about it. Uh, gotcha. So, um, how can I help you? What brings you here? Well, so, our boss is definitely, well, hopeful for improving this place, but one of the things he lacks, it's not resources, it's just people who want to improve this place. Doesn't he live so up there with, I like, was... two other people? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a fancy place. Gotta be lonely. Uh... Yeah, can you imagine? Well, well, 
he's trying. He seems to have at least good intentions, if not all of the skill sets, and you have both. So I was wondering if you would be interested in like collaborating. Like, what does he? What do, what does he have up there anyway? Um, oh, I think I can. I think I see where this is going. Uh. Erica would remember all of the stuff that might be interesting to Louise, but considering that you issues, have so sci not. you have science and electronics, you could probably like say like, "Oh, yes. he's got these cool toys." Yes. Wink, wink. I would go uh, on about you know the all of the electronics and the very cool car and that whole comm system that's advanced and stuff. I'm actually so you know. Okay, here we go. Workshop and machinery has a basic workshop power machine suitable for light fabrication. They were intended for maintenance of vehicles and systems. A couple of talented Heck people yeah. using village workshop. Yep. Um, nice. His his things are good enough that you can make like actual like computer chips with them and everything, or like large axles. So did you know he like he has stuff that you can use to make actual computer chips with? And, like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Axles. Yeah. Well, so, um, no. uh, y you got us okay for this, right? Like, I'm not just gonna walk in there and it's gonna get shot at or anything. Well, no, he does specifically like tell us to find ways to help this town, help the rest of the area too. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. You know, he, hey, he I'd, love to, I'd love to. I'd love to come and visit. Now that I know a little more, and I always thought the estate looked kind of funny, but Heck maybe yeah. with this new perspective. And yeah, and maybe we can wrangle uh, somebody else in the compound to help you with the numbers. At least one of them has to speak numbers. Just statistically looking. <laughs> nice. I mean, I think okay. I think at least one other person on this party has. I think Lisa has admin. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> like casually texting Lisa under the desk like, hey, I'm <laughs> going to buy you so many burgers if you help numberize this. I think I'm we have a good contact. I'm on board. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Just awesome. Cool. Um, well, she's willing to come right now if that's good with you. Yeah. Uh, do I have the contact for the like the HQ, if you will? Just to make sure they know not to shoot this person. Um, yeah. And the voice out in the okay. estate has a long range communicator, so you can send a message directly there. Presumably cool. someone will see this at some point before she arrives. Heck yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Heck yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Hopefully, we can sure, you know, try to make this as go as easily as possible. Um, but yeah, like we we land ourselves like pretty skilled scientists, lads. You know, I'm very interested to start this place because I think these people don't fully understand the the capability of some good technology. Mm -hmm. well, if they haven't had the chance to see it work Ooh. properly, by the way. I heard that most of those uh, noble states have things have special water reclamation units. Mm. If I could expand, mm. you already see her brain start to turn, and at this point, it becomes increasingly difficult to talk to her as sh she starts to nerd out in her brain. She's fun. Possibilities. Oh, yeah. Like sixteen layers in. Behind you is Jasper, who has come up the stairs, and it's like, oh. so, <laughs> who is your new friend, Louise? I'm Jasper Watts, head of this household. I, Erica, we met on the train. Erica oh. And, I, and you know, we had it out, and we may be collaborating with the project in the future if everything goes well. <laughs> Louis is like, yeah, we, 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 we play a little prank on the Jacobs. <laughs> oh my. Be, be careful there. Those people have a lot of money, and money means power to some. Wouldn't want to get on their backside, especially if you plan to do something big and industrial. Always need money. Um, so what is it exactly that you're talking about here? Well, I mean, we're talking about making sure like, we all got... You're becoming a little quieter there, by the way. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Please do not float away from your microphone oh, like a okay. dust in the wind. It's just more that the microphone floated away from me. No, uh, she's just spacing <laughs> out. She's spacing time. Erica just suddenly going quiet in the background, like, mm -hmm. hmm. losing well. the charisma, if you will. But, yeah, you know, a bit projects for the community. I mean, what what is the point of having all of that money if you don't put it where yes, it's yes. useful? So. I would love to see, you know, I try to go to 
college myself and learn some things, but the time never came. But I hope that my daughter can do what I could not and make this place a shining star in the beginning of a better rack and goal. <laughs> Certainly a good goal. And hey, you never know. Maybe there will be some courses that you can also take. Get, get oh. some of that interest back. You know, this place doesn't really have a school. Ooh. Mm -hmm. How come? Well, there's I mean, really no it... need for uh, for uh, proper education around here now, is there? Most people get taught the basics at home. Hmm. Well, maybe if we give them a chance, they will, you know, develop a need as well. But I imagine that once an actual industry gets going, there's some need for it. But on mm -hmm. the other hand, it's not like anyone wants to invest in it. City admin is wholly ineffectual. The collective is more interested oh. in land ownership, and the company just <laughs> only just wants to teach people how to maintain and do their things. So, I can't see anyone around here who would want to invest in, well, the education my daughter was able to get. Hmm. When did the company and the other dudes, like, start, you know, drifting so heavily apart? Because their goals seem to be almost compatible. Uh, who, who are drifting apart? Uh, the company and the other folks. They're the just, like, refusing to cooperate. City admin? The, those, yes. Um, their problem is the very typical clash of like we want to have all the money, and the other ones are like we want to tax people to pay for some minor social services, and also maybe we want to institute like a friendly soft dictatorship or something. Hmm. Yeah, soft dictatorship. Okay, N never mind. I can see <laughs> where the problem is. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> It's your usual, like, big government, small government, and they don't like each other. Mm -hmm. Also, the lady in charge, um, I imagine that you send some WhatsApp messages. If you get anything from the lady, you would probably understand that, like, yeah, they're, they're, they're money-grubbing dicks. <laughs> It'll make sense in a bit once you all meet up and talk it out. Okay, duh. So. Also, this guy, can gladly t this guy can also gladly tell you that the riches aren't exactly... Even the people who like them have an incredibly pragmatic relationship with them. By the way, like them, I said with big quotation marks. Ah, gotcha. The tolerate. She's a hag. The, the matriarch is a hag. Ooh. Okay. Got any cool gossip? Um, it's impressive that she's a hag at 46 years old. <laughs> G oh. Getting in there early. <laughs> Get, getting the Karen badge. Okay. What? If you see Thanks. Jude, run for your dang life. Will do. Will do. Oh, um, he's very proud of this. He goes like, "By the way, did you know that my daughter has been that every one of our family have been tested for uh, what's it called again?" The uh, he's like psionics, Dad. He insisted psionics. on it. Yeah, it's really expensive. In case you didn't know, it costs several tens Ooh. of thousands. My father's in a big debt as a result of all of this stuff, and I don't really know if it's going to be possible to do much with everything I've learned with all this clouding around. Mm. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. I mean, yeah, we can see how we can fix that, too. <laughs> like, at least partially. Oh, don't worry, dear. We have a while mm. until they start collecting. Mm. And hey, if you need anybody to sweet talk them away, you know who to call. Oh, we will, dear. It's, it's very nice mm. to meet some nice people and make some new friends. Heck yeah. It's Marvelous. It's really nice meeting you, sir. I, I love this family. If you want to, by the way, at this point, I'll allow you to add uh, Louise as a contact. Sure thing. She's, she's on friendly relationship, and if you ever give her a call, she'll probably come on over to help you out. Oh, Friends, yeah. yeah. Friend acquired. Not quite an ally. Like, she's not going to dive into danger, but she'll definitely be there if you're near. Heck yes. Uh, Louise. Unless there's something else you wish to discuss, we're going to presume that you have some, some small talk and leave eventually. Sure thing. It's, it's been it's now afternoon. It's been a while. You you some people spent hours climbing towers. Others spent a while with paperwork or fixing things. You've all been busy for a bit. When you arrive back at the post office to shake hands and exchange information. Hi, buds. You're probably also a bit tired because you've been walking in blistering sun. <laughs> Go sit in the car and get the air SE on. We're so gonna turn. We're gonna. We can emphasize the steampunk in the sci fi.
No one got anything to say to anyone? Well, I mean, I'm gonna share my progress. I mean, that's not what I'm doing. Yeah. It's it's now late afternoon. Um, you could go get dinner if you want it, or you could go I back home. One. <laughs> yes, please. Hmm. I mean, I could still go for a snack. Hell, let's generate some random, sh some random like uh, restaurant names and see which one you you want to go with. Let's do that. Oh heck. Generateur de nom de restaurant. No, that's not what I want. I want French. Although I... Hell, let's just go for it. You find the following places. You find the Oval Saloon, the Summer Monument. Let me just copy these so you can have them. Ready, ready. And finally, there's one place that is called La Porte de la Flamme. <gasps> oh no, not only they're hicks, they're also French. One of them probably got like a French dictionary and had like three words. He was like, "This is all I need." Fire port. Wait, hold on. Fire port. Port of the flame. Port. That's badass. Which one of these names down. strikes you as neat? Last one. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're going for the French. You follow up on some leads after asking around, like, "Hey, where's a place to bite?" And you eventually reach up on this high end for the area building. It has a proper, like, completely made out of stone and everything. Um, the exterior has this constantly burning light source. Uh, it looks like it should be a fountain, but there's no water for it. Uh, the interior, brightly lit, nicely set tables. It's almost like you're not in a Wild West town in there. Wow. There's a little desk for a maitre d', but there is none. Because, uh, it's probably not the time for it. It's not too busy. Is there any sort of, like, bell that we can ring? Or, uh, no, you can just take a seat by the looks of it. Okay. <coughs> Taking a seat. Uh, the person who owns this place does not look like they're from around here. This is very easy to tell because they're a cat person. A lion person, to be specific. Ooh. An Aslan, you would know them as. Is that the actual name in the setting? Yep. Because that sounds really familiar. Yeah, because of a uh, written wardrobe, Narnia. The guy's called Aslan. Oh, that's where I know it. Oh, I don't know if there's a relation between though. the two terms, but hey. That's kind of neat. Now, how old is Traveler again? I have no idea. Hmm. I'm just gonna look up the definition of okay. Aslan means lion in Turkish. So there you go. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> All right, fair enough. It's that lame. It's a Turk. It's a Turkish lion in charge of a French restaurant on a Western. Uh, that's really great. I like the that. culture clash could make a train crash. What's well, best is that this is crashed, kind of yeah. realistic. We almost crashed too. Since the, the, well, the, the chef himself, excited to see some new guests from out of town, walks over to the table and with a boisterous amount of energy declares, Welcome to La Porte de la Flemme. How may I help my fine new guests? One thing that I would like to ask up front is whether or not they accept the credits that we have. Um, Good one. That is a, a great question. Just, I just, just to how to how you give me those credits and I'll talk to the company. They're the only ones with connections to the downport, so they're the only ones who accept it. But don't worry, I'll accept it just fine. I'll have to put right. on a small surcharge of five percent, though. That's fair enough. Um, anyway, I suppose we're looking for something like a light meal. Yes, 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 yes. Now, I have lovely dishes. I import ingredients from time to time, you see. I even invested it in a fancy freezer, so I keep it fresh all year long. Now, I have, and he shows you the, the, let's just put it like this. The menu is a lot of dishes where it's like, muy caliente, and all that. A lot of spicy dishes. Some dishes have like, the, the, they, they, the pictures that he has look like flames. This is clearly some off-order who thought that he would be making more bang than he would, than he is. Because these are really nice menus and everything. Oh, well boy. printed. So so a lot of the dishes look like flames, or they have water motifs. It's a very nice uh, setup. A bit expensive, but hey. Is there any particular dish you want to go for? Do you want to go for something with uh, a little bit of fish in it? You're going to go for something big beef? Or are you going to go for those? Mm, those look like some hella spicy tacos. Mm, hold on, let me look up the name of the thing. I don't quite remember it. Okay, I hope, I hope that this thing has a dish name generator, because we're going to go for it. Fancy <laughs> food names. Hell yeah. Um, 
you don't know what the hell it is, but they've got things called Hydra Snacks and Godiaku and Godiakot Buns. Hydra Snacks. <laughs> Please. Oh, there you go. Tempura Fish. That's the name I was looking for. Do they have that? Never heard of it. Let's hook it up. Tempura Fish. Uh, it's basically fish, right? fish fried in breadcrumbs and such. So it's crunchy. Sure. He probably has that. This is a fancy restaurant. He he knows this stuff. That would be nice. And some salad, too. Naturally. He takes all of your orders and will get you your meals. And while you sit around, this one as it gets darker, like the afternoon progresses and the sun slowly sets in the distance, um, the difference between... Like, the, the fact that there's no electrical lighting leaves a big... You're used to places where they're eventually, like, the street lights come on. But there are none. Mm -hmm. Some places have, like, a little light source hanging outside, but for the most part, it's dark. This place seems to have some sort of generator, considering that there are electrical lights here. Well, it makes sense that they would bring something with them. They have a freezer, yes. <laughs> they need yeah. a power source. Yeah. That makes sense. Which means they might be actually interested in uh, signing some sort of deal with... Uh state uh sure so your meals arrive he's like i hope you enjoy it very much i do my best on every meal it's a little shameful the people around here don't really like it too much but i mean if you do takeout i'm down to order I have but a little drone fly fly a little baggy <laughs> you're right I think people might enjoy that, considering that they're always so busy and a little too tired to walk. Yeah, but how would yeah. they contact me? Especially there are no phones here. We could probably put on a landline. <laughs> Fucking landline to call a restaurant for orders. <laughs> uh, I mean, See, that makes sense. sense. <laughs> to be fair, I'm pretty sure that's how telephones took off at the, at the beginning. On the onset. Yeah. It's just like, hey, I want to call my pizzeria. <laughs> well, it's... Probably way easier to manage actual copper wire than, you know, Wi-Fi connections and satellite dishes, especially on the low um, crab planet. Nice. Yeah. Um, well, he, he, he stands there and, and, and like eagerly waits to see what you think of it because you're clearly off-worlders and he's like, oh, man, I hope, I hope they like my meals. Ooh. Well, is it actually good? Um, you're pretty sure this guy has a culinary degree because... It's perfect. Ooh. Chef's kiss. Hell yeah. Chef, chef's kiss, exactly. Love that for us. You're not sure he can do that himself, considering that he has lion head, but hey. I mean, it's the gesture of the cast. <laughs> not the, uh... <laughs> not the shape of the snout. Aw, that's cute. Yeah, yeah that's... That. that is delicious. Maybe I mean, the one thing that does strike you is that the yes. quality of the ingredients is a bit bad, and he's a bit sparse oh. with like the water during some of the steps of, of making the meal and everything, like the salad's a bit dry and everything, because, you know, restrictions and limitations of the time. Well, yeah, that's fair enough. That's I mean, we're in the middle of... Nothing you can blame on his skill, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so lovely to I see. Think that's okay. Ooh, you would not happen to know uh, the man who lives up in that mansion up on the hill, right? The only other person around here who seems uh, to have any technology? Yeah, 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 yeah. Technically, we do work for them. Oh, maybe you can ask him to come by. I would love to serve a noble. I'm sure I could meet his demands. From what you know from Willard so far, he'd probably be like, what? Uh, yeah, but in a sense that, hey, you could endorse this um, establishment, if you wish. And if not, we can always order takeouts. Just have a little drone fly over with like a little sticky note on it. Oh, my, my, my. Such big with sense. like a banknote duct tape to it. <laughs> my my, I like where this is going. We're class. Our boss may I be mean, classy, look, but we sure aren't. If if the locals don't appreciate your cooking, uh, off worlders might. We have a couple. Oh, more maybe, here. but there aren't many people here. The company's trains don't run all that often. Oh, may I recommend a nice destination for you to have a look? Um, sure, the cliffs, go the train goes over those cliffs near Fovent. Beautiful vista. Oh, and the lake too is a delight. Um, I heard of some abandoned houses up on top of the goal where you could stay and you'll have a beautiful view every morning. So if you mm. want to go out and about and see some things, you might go there. I heard they're quite oh, fancy houses too. 
By the way, I don't remember if you've mentioned it last mentioned it last time, but uh, that lake thing. Mm -hmm. Like, is it a stable lake, or does it just dry up in summer and such? It will or dry up if this part? drought continues, but otherwise it's a stable lake as best as people know. Okay, fair enough. Maybe we could try and use water from it. Yes. And since we have slightly higher technology level, we might actually be able to do some piping. Ooh. Um, he actually tells you something else about the lake, since you're talking mm -hmm. and thinking about it. Um, the lake actually has several semi-underground passages. So, if you're on the map, you see this little nook over here? And this little nook over here, and those those dotted lines that lead to the lake? The map is currently blocked for me. Oh. Does anyone else see the we map? Might not, we might not have mm -hmm. a token of a vision, nope. basically. The party oh, party. gosh dang it. Don't tell me that's... Ah, oh, I'm so dumb. Here you go. So dumb. Don't worry about it. Reload the map because I, oh, you know what? I'll just turn, I'll just turn all this off. Can you see it now? Yeah, um, yeah, down here, lovely, yeah. and down here are like little. Uh, you see those thin lines that go to the lake? Mm -hmm. Those are rivers, or used to be rivers. They used to flow back when the lake was a bit fuller. Mm -hmm. So there's already some piping taking close to town. It's just that the drought has started to kill every source of flow. Right, that makes sense. Bop, 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 bop. Where is our boy? Ah, uh -huh. to the right, okay. This is for Stockholm State. Boy. Thank you. He's a little distance from town. Yeah, that, that town is not particularly big, yeah, but it's neat. I like that. But look at how many rivers there are in this area. Well, oh no, most of those gray lines are just roads. Yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. Oh, if there you mean the lake, yeah, there are a lot of... Uh, yeah, those are like the big hills and mountains, yes. Mm. That thin, grayed-out line is basically the riverbed. It's only like two gotcha. of them. Also, just to clarify, this one says Rack and Gore, and you've been saying Rack and Gold. Listen, I keep getting confused about it. They're very similar titles, all right? That's okay. That's, that's okay. Don't be ashamed of your Japanese ancestry. You cannot tell the difference between R and L. <laughs> I can't believe I'm being bullied on live TV. Get out of here, cameraman. I don't want to be recorded in my deepest moments. That's okay, Sasha. Don't worry about it. Anyway, kids. Mm -hmm. This excited cat man is going to be here the whole day. She's like, oh, man. Some other guests will arrive over time as the evening progresses. Mm -hmm. um, one of those people is... Let's just call her a hag. Followed by two, huh. two guys who are quite a bit younger than her. Oh boy! Oh boy! You can just Bodyguard? you can just feel the theme music of the of the room changing just by her presence alone. Bottom, bottom, bottom. Is it likely Jude and siblings? Yep. Honestly, if the Richards had a theme scene, theme song at all, it'd be something like refined with an industrial touch because of their background in industry. See. If you're smart and you know what you're doing, you can make character theme songs say something about what they do and who they are. Just, just, just a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge, design tip from your boy Safik coming right at you. Uh, I know nothing. I'm Jon Snow back when he discovered cholera. <laughs> yes, but those are definitely the Richards, judging by the fact that one of them is like this big dope. If you've ever read Of Mice and Men, um, mm -hmm. that kind of dope. Like big tough, but... Farts out the ear. Well, well, as long as you don't ask him to tell you about rabbits. She orders a fine dish, but even this fine dish made perfectly does not make her smile in the slightest. It's like the muscles are just absent in her face. Botox? I don't think they have Botox around here. I think she's just a hag. If she ever smiles, she is banished from this plane of existence. Oh my god, and there, if there's more than two of them together, but less than four, they get uh, special spells. To <laughs> yes. She will corrupt Luis and that Jacob's lady and form a common. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I'd rather not get involved with them because, I don't know, I'm not a people person. Uh, just observe what they do. Last they time you got involved with hags, they made pies out of kids. 
<sighs> yeah, I remember that. They killed me with a lightning bolt. What Wait, no, that do? wasn't the last time. That was the time before last. The very last time we got involved, we actually killed one of them, and then they replaced the missing one with a purple worm, and they gave it a nice little hat, and that was adorable. Anyway, oh. they taught us how to form our own coven. Smooch! Oh. That's a retelling of Macbeth I haven't yeah. seen. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the three witches. You can't call it yeah. Macbeth. This play is now cursed. It's always been cursed, huh? Point is. Also, I do apologize for background noises, but people are. If you do not wish to engage, I cannot blame you. We'll just move on to when you leave. Go back to your car and drive home. That's all right. Uh, personally, I would like to just observe and see how they behave and act, etc. If they're even approachable. Because if they're just an asshole near there, just Jude is is very obsessed with her meal. Um, the big dunce, who you think might be Carter, judging by all the information you've heard and gathered passively so far, mm -hmm. um, he's just like mmm, tasty. I mean, honestly, same dude. <laughs> um, Jaden, Jaden, the uh, the one that you were, that's the you know the one that knows what the hell's going on, is looking at you. Not sure what to make of you or what your co consequence of your presence is going to be, but you We're know, just having a meal. We're not here to pick a fight. Kind of guy who checks his watch every once in a while and is like looking over notes that he has. Hmm. Makes sense. Well, I suppose then we don't really want to engage with them just yet, and we don't really have a reason. Just that we're tired. So it's fine that we acknowledge each other's existence, but we don't necessarily have to say anything to each other. Mm hmm. Yeah. At the moment. Marvelous. After dinner, and you wave goodbye to this fine Aslan gentleman. It's like, oh, so nice to have you. Bye. Yes, goodbye. You head on back to your car, where you find a little note under your wind wipers. Your windscreen oh wipers. Oh my god, did we park in the wrong place? No, it's not a parking ticket. There are no laws for that around here. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe that's how they think you could scare off the city slickers, you know, it's like a cargo ship. cult, yes. Not necessarily a cargo cult, just a cult. The kind of direction of thinking, like, if you put parking tickets on their cars, they leave. Yeah, but nobody knows what a parking ticket is. So it's just like some random screen place. Yeah, exactly. It just looks like one. It's like, oh, I saw it in the movie once. <laughs> oh my god. Somebody spare roll of toilet paper. Somebody yeah. spare me this fate. Uh, by the way, the car is completely enclosed, right? It's not uh, one of those like open jeeps. Um, there, the the cars are completely enclosed, but there are some that have like an open back for easier transport. Right, makes sense. So, um, so it's a little like pickup truck thingy. Anyway, underneath your car is like a little little, little piece of paper. Um, it seems to have been signed by Jaden. And if you ever happen to, to be in the mood for a little uh, chit-chat, one-on-one conversation, he's more than willing to talk. Aww. It even mentions how to get to his to, to, to their house and how to make sure that you get to him instead of mm -hmm. the hag or their servants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, that sounds like a very practical way of interacting with him. Sure, I could swing by. But not now. It's late. They probably don't want you coming by in the evening. <laughs> I'm sure they're powerful enough, and it would be beneficial for everybody to get involved with them, at least at one point. Cool. At some point. Yeah. Excuse me. Anyway. They're a major player here, so we should probably at least get a feel for them. I mean, he might be more reasonable than the mother who's... Seen... The mother, by the way, is the one who's actively running the business right now. So, he might have a different way of looking at things. Maybe he can be beneficial. Maybe he will kill you the minute Why? he figures out what you're trying to do. My hat said died for a second, didn't hear anything that was said in the past minute. Could you please repeat after I finish talking, I mean. Well, I'm I have a brain like a sieve, so. That uh, I mean, honestly, same. That's why I keep taking notes. And it'd be them. a good idea if we spoke to them because they're a major player here. And then Safi was like, oh, maybe he seems to have a different disposition. Maybe he's better." Or worse. Or worse. Maybe this is one of those quests where it's like, "Oh, she's they're the worst person ever," but it's like the devil, you know. <laughs> it's like I am looking for a hundred and one Dalmatians. Would you have? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking reference to make! Yeah, it's like I, I want to skin a hundred puppies for a coat. It's like there are better ways to order a coat. Jesus Christ, lady! 
And then we teach her about Amazon fucking deliveries. <laughs> At night, the road back is remarkably quiet and still. There's not much to see. Most animals are asleep. <sighs> so we're calm to it all. Um, as you drive the vehicle, you become aware of the fact that it has an automatic pilot that can take you to destinations that it's been driven to before, if you want to. We did discover that when we were taking um, yep. stock of the available resources. Mm -hmm. It's neat. Yeah. If we're drunk, um, ever. The, the main drive. reason you find out about this is because when you start driving the road that Dravid drove you to the estate, it's like it looks like you're trying to go, you know, like Clippy. Like It looks like you're trying to go to this destination. Can I be of service? Yeah, it's I like might it, as well just test it. it notices that you're going a place, like you're following a specific kind of route. So it's like, are you trying to go here? I can take care of that for you. You can just take a nap. Naps are good. Mm. Also, why not? The forest out in the state is a strange building compared to everything else around. The high farm, and I think it's called the West Farm. Let me just pull this one up. High farm. So there is the High Farm and the West Farm, which are both owned by the Forestop in the state. Those have those are connected to the power grid, so they have electrical lighting. So they're one of the few buildings around here that are pretty well lit at this time of evening. Once you roll up to the building itself, it's kind of weird to see like a proper compound lit up from all sides and everything with the, the fancy lighting on the big gate that goes inside. Mm -hmm. it's, it stands out a lot. You've parked the vehicle inside of the garage. Is there anything you'd like to do? I'll do a checkup of, I suppose, the security rule, and that, that's about it. See if anyone was sneaking around. See if any jackals were fucking around in the territory. Dravid like comes out of the building and waves hello. Hello. Hey there. How'd it go? You managed to make your way around just fine, or did you get stuck and stay the whole time fixing the car? <laughs> Got a lot of work done. Got some leads, got some... Dang. Details. You sure are some go-getters. I see why the boss decided to hire you for this job. Or invite you, I guess, since you're pretty friendly terms. I get anxious when I don't do anything, so... <laughs> hmm. Well, if you got nothing better to do, this place could use someone to pick up all the weeds and help clean up the outside a bit. It is starting to look a bit unpresentable in places, isn't it? <laughs> oh, right. Tumbleweeds are also getting all over the place. Yeah, the, 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 right. this place could use a little bit of a, of a scrub it up, some, some weeding, some clearing of the, the vines. Makes sense. By the way, I saw the message about this girl you wanted to invite in. What's the deal with that? Just making sure that we're getting the right people in. Yeah, she's a scientist. Definitely into like electronics. Mm -hmm. And can help us, you know, do our job. Um, mind clarifying? A person with skills that are wasted in this community. Well, then maybe we should just get her a, sp a ticket on a spaceship and send herself off somewhere else. You know, that, that's, mean, that's interesting, but she might be useful here. Yeah, like we're not trying to fix someone well, else. There's a reason why I'm not the one running this whole ship, so... Do make sure to tell Willard about this, though. I'm sure he'd love to hear. After all, he's trying to make connections, sure. ain't he? No, nah, just sure for the sake of reference, because I wasn't there, you didn't make any promises that he couldn't keep, right? Yeah, no. Just like that, we can like that will show who is around yes. and see if she's interested in co collaborating with us, right? All right, makes sense. Like, Fair enough. Yeah. Just kind of bragged about all the equipment that we have, and that was about it. Yeah, like to pique her interest, help. because well, I'm thinking yeah. this is like this is an actual educated professional that we have just sitting in her like grandpa's workshop. Well, she didn't have we a workshop at all. Much. Like she doesn't have anything to do well. to 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 put her skills to use. Well, th there we go. We we can we can fix that. We can help that. Also, while this place does have a tech guy, and Dravid knows something about mechanical engineering and all that kind of stuff, um, she probably has like the necessary things to actually build like a small factory and a cottage industry out of this place. Yeah. So get an economy going. Yep. I mean, it's really a matter of once you get the first second workshop going, like it just explodes from there if you can get it, keep it going. Mm hmm. But the problem, How of course, is, stone? of course, when you think about it, there is the fact that the big problem is going to be importing materials, which will be necessary. It's going to be difficult if the train only runs every once a blue moon. Hmm. Additionally, you're oh, going to need to get access to ground and areas to put those factories. The company, of course, is big manufacturing, so they'll be upset that city admin might have some problems. 
and you're probably going to need some capital. And who knows who can help you with that? Work it out. The collective might. They they're a bunch of people, or maybe you can find the Jacobs and beg them for some cash. Baby steps. One thing. Baby steps. Time. One thing at a time. But you're going strong. In fact, yeah. I'm going That's to say, um, over the course of this objective, you're trying to raise Sir Willard's his uh, what's it called? His credibility statistic. It's mm -hmm. gone up a bit. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. You have left a positive impression of this man as you've helped around town a bit, and some people are like, man, look at these nice people out of town going out of their way to help out a little bit. Um, you're we didn't make it worse, lads. <laughs> we didn't make it worse. Um, because this modifier was minus one first, because the guy before him was kind of a dick, um, it's mm -hmm. now plus zero, meaning that you, you got something better going for you. He's got some credibility. Yeah. People aren't immediately going to brush him off. Which is how That's it should be. So, we're going to close the session here for now. And next time, you guys are going to talk around time. Maybe lay some actual connections. Meet some people. Go golfing or something. I don't know. I don't know how rich people handle this stuff. Yeah. That would be nice. There's enough space for a golf course around here, though. Oh, hey, I got a free meal for fixing a windmill. Yeah, it was not bad. It was a nice stew, you know. All kinds of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Been dry, but mm, a good stew is a good stew. Some alien. Probably some alien stuff and veg veggies. Veggies? Vegetables. Yeah, veggies, yeah. probably. But that was good and nice. And next this time, lovely, yeah. um, don't forget to write out what you plan to do next time so that I can prepare a little bit and have a little bit ready. Sure, I mean, absolutely. a bunch of this was played by ear, but a little bit of direction goes a long way, they say. Yes. We'll do our best. Thank you, guys. Oh, gotta go. But it was very nice to hear from you again. Yeah, See boys. Bye-bye. Bye. This was a nice, quiet session. It was really enjoyable. <laughs>